Fresh from victory, the start to the day is now a little different for Chris Minns. I'm deeply, deeply grateful that the people of New South Wales entrusted Labor with this challenge and we're going to meet that challenge. The first item on the agenda, improving pay for nurses and teachers. There's not a moment to lose and obviously ensuring that we've got our plans in place, particularly for essential workers. Labor's promise to abolish the coalition's controversial cap on public sector wage rises propelled the party into power. And after 12 years in the electoral wilderness, it was a success to be shared. New South Wales Labor is back and ready to govern in this great state. Thank you so much. Tonight, a fresh start for New South Wales begins. Majority government hasn't yet been reached, but the mood for change caused a swing that saw Liberal seats fall one after the other. As leader uh, of the parliamentary uh, Liberal Party, uh, I take full responsibility uh, for the loss this evening. The party did manage to hold off a teal wave on the northern beaches, but couldn't stop a local mayor racking up one win for an independent. The Liberals are now also looking for a new leader after Dominic Perrottet stepped down. To everyone in the Liberal Party, I'd say this. Um, this next period of time uh, will not be easy, uh, but it will be necessary. After a bruising loss for the Liberals federally, the party now only leads in Tasmania and the recriminations here have already begun. Wall-to-wall -wall Labor governments is a powerful thing, but it also pits Premier against Premier and a Prime Minister, all from the same party, in the inevitable Federation tussle. I made it really clear during the campaign that party affiliation comes second to my responsibilities as Premier of New South Wales. As Dominic Perrottet relinquishes his responsibilities, he Dolby AC3 Audio. Done a great job as a, as a government and I'm really proud of the team I've led. One that suffered significant losses. <laughs> and now there's a new team to take over. Ashley Graper, ABC News, Sydney. The ALP comes to power thanks to a red wave in Sydney's west. Seats that had stuck with the Liberals for years flipped to Labor. Now Chris Minns will be under pressure to deliver on his promises. Here's state political reporter Cayman Gok. A hot meal and a hot take. This time and last time before we used to vote for Liberal, but we thought we'd just give a chance to Labor. We need a change. That's why we went for Labor. I think it's about time, maybe some fresh ideas and a fresh approach to governance in New South Wales. Western Sydney was the key ingredient to Labor's election success. Really encouraging some of the seats that are coming out, especially in the outer suburban uh, Western Sydney. Electorates like Parramatta, East Hills, Riverston, Penrith and Camden all flipping to Labor, with two other seats still in doubt. Where you've seen these big swings are seats that have absorbed huge population growth. And in these suburbs, there are key issues that are front of mind. The issue for me was privatisation. I absolutely hated that they uh, sold off roads and uh, energy. Education. Um and the various caring industries and the support. Keep us out of the red. <laughs> That's what worries me about a Labor government. They like spending. I think in terms of the infrastructure, it's in improved a lot. And if this continues uh, in the next four years, it will really boom. Even though we have had infrastructure here, and I'll always give the former government credit for that, it hasn't been partnering with that population growth. A third of all votes cast came from Western Sydney. The area has changed dramatically since Labor was last in power in 2011, but it's clear the party's platform resonated with voters, leading to a red wave across the city's west. The next generation is still learning who's in charge. Dolby AC3 Audio. <laughs> Western Sydney waiting to see what this government will deliver over the next four years. Cayman Gok, ABC News, Sydney. The teal wave in the federal election didn't eventuate stateside, but the New South Wales crossbench is growing. No Climate 200-backed independents have so far been elected, but some seats were still in play when counting closed last night. It's too close to call for the teals in Pittwater and Wallandilly and the independent in Willoughby. Six independents have retained their electorates and some have had significant swings towards them, including in Orange, Sydney, Barwon and Wagga Wagga. 
One new face has so far been added to the crossbench. That's local mayor Michael Regan, who's claimed Wakehurst. The Liberal stronghold was held by the former health minister, Brad Hazard, by a margin of almost 22%. The community have made a statement that they don't want to be taken for granted anymore. They just want things done. They want someone that represents them. It was a challenge for the Greens, but it looks like they'll retain all three seats. The party is ahead in the Balmain count, where there's been an almost 8% swing towards Labor. There was no counting today. That resumes tomorrow. So, which seats are still in doubt? ABC election analyst Anthony Green has all the key numbers. On Saturday night, it was clear that Labor had won the election and probably got a majority. At this stage, that still looks like what's going to happen. If you look at the seats which are definitely decided for one side or the other, we've got Labor on 45. They need 47 for majority. We're absolutely confident to the 45 uh, and confident they will go on to majority, as I'll explain in a moment. The Coalition, 25, seven others, two Greens. 12 seats remain in doubt. If we look at those seats that are in doubt, you can see where Labor's majority comes from. Of the 12, Labor is ahead in four, Kayama, Miranda, Ride and Terrigal. I think they'll win at least two of those. There are some of these other government seats or current government seats where the Labor has, still has a chance. So Labor will reach 47 and potentially go beyond that. There's Dolby AC3 Audio. Third of the votes been counted. Labor's increased its position. It's got eight seats. The coalition has got six. The Greens, two. Mark Latham has been re-elected, but his chances of bringing in running mate Tanya Mihaly don't look good. And it looks like legalised cannabis will elect their first member in former Greens MLC, Jeremy Buckingham. State political reporter Ashley Raper is with me now. Ashley, Labor's heading for a majority, so Chris Minns is going to have a clear mandate for his policies. Yes, Juanita, it was a remarkable victory for the Labor Party and Chris Minns. The mood for change clearly factored into the result, but it also had to do with policy. Labor successfully tapped into its roots as the party for the workers. Its approach to public sector pay rises resonated and voters, it seems, recognised that it could perhaps lead to better delivery of services in schools and hospitals. So what now for the Liberal leadership? Matt Keane was the heir apparent. He's been the deputy leader and treasurer. But surprisingly, late this afternoon, he released a statement saying he doesn't want the job. He says for family reasons. There are other contenders, all ministers in the Perite government. Uh, they include Anthony Roberts, Mark Speakman, Alistair Henskins. They all believe to be considering the job. But when it appears that the Liberals still have a long way to go uh, in the path of choosing who will lead them in opposition.